Hello, pre-calculus students. This is Mr. McAllen again, and uh, today we're going to talk about exponential equation modeling. Now, we've done a bunch of things in class with exponential equations where we've talked about what type of exponential equations are growth, what type are decay. Um, we did some stuff with modeling the equations. We even did stuff with logistic growth equations. Here we have um, a, a scenario where we're told to find specifically an exponential function that satisfies these uh, specific conditions. The initial value is 10. They give us a specific time point and what the population would be. And they want us to use a specific exponential type of equation. So um, again, let me just re-emphasize um, some of the things. Exponential growth is characterized by uh, a few things. We have a point at 0, 1. If this is just a regular um, y equals a base to an exponent, um, and a would be the initial value, b would be the growth or the growth rate. So if, if b is greater than 1, you have uh, growth. And if b is between uh, 0 and 1, you have decay. Let me spell that right. So, you know, we've done a bunch of things in class. We also have a, um, we also have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So these are some characteristic traits of the function. But sometimes we get data where we don't get, like, you know, perfect points at 0, 1, and then we have a next point at 1, comma, you know, whatever it would be. You know, we, we have data that's given to us, and we have to come up with the A and the B value that will fit the exponential growth of that model. So in this situation here, you know, we have a model where we say, you know, f of x is equal to A times B. Actually, let me write f of t, because of my variables over here are time. I have time. This is t divided by what is called the time constant. Now, the time constant, what it is, the time tc is the time constant, and that is the amount of time for um, the growth to occur. Okay, so the, the time for the growth to occur. Let's say, for example, that the growth that you are trying to model is like doubling growth. Then the time constant would be the amount of time for one doubling cycle to occur. Um, based on the data, you're going to base your growth exponent on what the data shows. So I'm going to show this through an example. Um, it says our initial value is 10. So at time 0, I'm at 10. So I know already know what my A coefficient should be. It's going to be 10, because that's the initial value. Um, at time equals 3, I go to 20. Now, I'm assuming from the information given that we do know, in fact, that this is exponential. So the curve is going to look like such and have a horizontal asymptote. But what we have to do is base our model on these two points. So because um, I go from 10 initially to 20 at 3, I'm going to call this, I do division between the two, and that shows me that my model says it's going to be doubling. So I'm going to like force the doubling situation to happen. I have y is equal to a b to the time over tc. So again, the a value is your initial value. That would be 10 times the b value, because the value I had was 20 and this was 10. That's going to be a doubling function. And um, the time constant is the amount of time it took for doubling to occur. And that was 3 units of time. Let's call it 3 seconds. So you put 3 underneath where the time constant would be. Now this is a way it kind of works to justify it. Let's say that you had 3 seconds going on, and you plug 3 into the numerator. If you put 3 in for time, notice that the 3 
and the uh, three in the denominator divide and give you one. So you've basically gone through one cycle of doubling. Let's say time goes to six. Now you have two cycles of doubling, so the answer should be not just 20, but it should go up to 40 when you plug in that time value. So this would be the equation that would represent the data shown. Let's do one more example. I'm going to make up some points. Let's say that our, um, because some, uh, you know, some of you might think that everything is doubling or half-life uh, halving. Um, so let's do one other example. Let's say that, um, that the initial amount is 6. And let's say that at time equals 2.5, uh, you have um, 10, uh, we'll call this, you know, people. And at 2.5, you have 10 people. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Um, and we'll call it like, uh, um, we could say this is hours. So, you know, here we, we can graph, if they say that, you know, we want to model these two points exponentially, we would put in, at zero, we would be at six, so zero comma six. And at 2.5, I would be at 10. And now I'm forcing my exponential model to fit through these points, but I've got to have, um, you know, the right type of coefficients to make this curve work. Remember, it's t over time constant. So here we go. So um, the a value is the initial value. So this is nice and easy. This is going to be uh, 6. And then the b value is going to be calculated. So, um, so I've got to find that t over my time constant. My time constant is going to be 2.5. Um, hours. So here's how you find what the B value is. From uh, So it, it was at 6 and it grew to 10 and if I do that division I can find out the multiple I need for one time cycle. So 10 divided by 6 is 5 divided by 3 or you could say 1.667 if you would because that would be 1 and 2 thirds. So then your exponential model will be 6 times 1.667t to the 2.5, t over 2.5. Now if I put that into Desmos, I should see that I have the same points as my initial function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to Desmos. Um, and I'm going to launch the calculator. And I have... Um, I don't know if you can see me here, so I'm going to put it into Desmos. Um, f of x is equal to, um, we said 6 was the initial amount, times 1.667 raised to the uh, x, even t divided by, uh, let's do x, because that's what Desmos wants, x over um, 2.5. So if we analyze the graph, hopefully we have 0, 6, there it is. And now if I scroll and I look at where I'm at at 2.5, 2.5 puts me at, there you go, 2.5 comma 10. Oh. Hopefully you can see that, 2.5 comma 10 is on the graph. So I did model my data with an exponential function that characterizes that type of growth. Hopefully uh, this helps you understand how to take data and model it with a specific exponential function based on what the data says. Look forward to hearing your comments and uh, good luck on the homework.